The world is round and trucking and sometimes you're at the top, but there are other times when you are at the bottom. But karma does come around and it will bite you in your derriere. So for those of you that don't know what derriere is, it's actually your bum in French. So a couple of stories for you. So story number one that I have for you is story about my account rep when I used to buy my trailers. So back in 2005, six, seven, eight, we always used to purchase the same trailers. Now the trailers that I purchased, I had an account rep on them. You know, and I, and I looked up to this account rep. He was a lot older than me. He's been in the industry for years and years and years. And he's always giving me advice about trailers on what trailers to spec them properly for our fleet for years I've been buying and I've been buying you know in, in groups of 10 15 20 packs of trailers and then COVID came around and I remember that I nailed a really really big contract and I was in desperate need of trailers right so again you know I saw the trailers rising in prices from 40,000 to 45,000 to 50,000 and then 55,000. But you know, karma does come around. So what happened is that when I was in desperate need of trailers, and yes, there was, you know, it was hard to find trailers. All of a sudden, you know, I called my rep and I said, listen, I really need trailers. You have to get me, uh, you know, a group of trailers. So then all of a sudden, you know, I receive a phone call back from him. And I said, oh, perfect, you found me trailers. And he sends me over a bill of sale. And back then, you know, the prices were like 55, 57,000. It was, you know, outrageous already at 55, 57, but I had no choice. But he sends me over a bill of sale for about $68,000. And I called him out on it and I told him, are you crazy? You know, why are you sending me this bill of sale for $68,000? And he said, listen, this is the situation. There are no trailers in the market. I said, yeah, but I'm not coming and buying from you for the first time. I've been with you for like 15 years already buying trailers. You're really gonna stiff me with this trailer and he said listen there's absolutely nothing that I can do so I sent him a very nice email that I promise you you know today you might feel like you're King Kong with all these trailers but I promise you there's gonna come a day that you are going to be begging me in order to purchase your trailers and that's where I left it okay now fast forward a year and a half all of a sudden I received that email uh, from him that you know saying that oh we have now trailers in stock and that's when I forward him my previous email and basically I cut my ties with him okay you cannot do this to a customer of yours that's been buying from you for years and years and years now he's lucky that my father watches this channel and he would never allow me to bash anybody publicly so I will not disclose on who this company is but there is a company out there that did do this to me and I will never purchase trailers from that company again as long as he's the account rep on them you know sometimes just like we've saw over the last two years the market for used equipment and new equipment just went through the roof right but you got to remember who your customers are who's been there for you you know before everything blew up and they're going to be there for you after things calm down unfortunately for him i will not be there for him when things calm down. Second story I have for you is about a customer and double brokering, okay? So this story over here is about a customer of ours. We've been servicing them for four or five years and then, you know, came their renewal time or their contract and all of a sudden, you know, they're coming back to me with the rates that we submitted were higher than, you know, the second and third carrier there. And I told them that, listen, you know, we've been servicing this account for four or five years. At least give me the opportunity to, you know, to come down a little bit with my rates. They gave me the opportunity, but I couldn't match what this new carrier was giving to them. So I ended up losing the account. And these were loads, I think, going from Tennessee, going into Ontario. I just couldn't match this rate that, you know, somebody gave them. About four months goes by and all of a sudden that customer is giving me a call and saying, hey, Ronan, you know, are you able to service this lane? And I tell him, well, what happened to the carrier that you put instead of me? You know, I had dropped trailers at your facility. I had to take all those trailers out of your facility. And he said, you wouldn't believe what happened. And he told me the story, what happened of this new carrier that came in, half the stuff they started brokering out to other carriers. And what happened is, is that they basically didn't end up paying the carrier that they brokered it out to. They ended up shutting their doors. Now the customer is stiffed. Not only did he pay the carrier that took me out of the equation, but now he has to pay a second time to the actual carrier that they brokered it out to. So under the Bills of Lading Act, a manufacturing plant is liable to pay a second time if a freight broker or freight forwarder has gone out of business, okay? Now, if they gave it to a carrier and that carrier ended up brokering out their freight, they're still liable to pay the end carrier. So was it really worth it to get a carrier out that was there for four or five years because of a couple of hundred dollars or I, I don't even know, you know what they quoted them at, but they came in a little bit under me, but they took out a carrier that was with them for four Four years I've been servicing that account and now I'm back in there again you know karma does come back around and sometimes you know you might have you know the upper hand today but that upper hand you might end up losing in you know the near future or in the future okay so that's your story of you know a customer that ended up getting their freight double brokered because they ended up taking out a carrier now the next story I have is about a company driver that you know is 
uh, was with us for about four years. Now, I try to hold on to my drivers that have been with us for a long time. I will do everything and anything for them, okay? I don't wanna see a driver end up going out the door that's been here for a few years. So a driver comes in and talks to me and says, listen, Ronan, I'm really sorry. I found another job that pays about five or six cents more than what you pay. And I told him, listen, there's no way that I can pay 71, 72 cents per mile. You know, especially with times are tough, there, there's no way that I can match those rates. You know, I'm really sorry. Now this is a driver that was driving 11, 12,000 miles every single month. Very, very steady driver. It was so hard for me to let him go. But you know, the driver ended up going to this other company. The other company did end up paying him 71, 72 cents per mile. Four or five months go down, and then all of a sudden I receive a phone call from that driver. Now, I talked to the driver and I asked him what's going on, and he tells me, listen, you know, they do pay 71, 72 cents, but I can't get past doing 8,000 miles a month. Maybe at the best case scenario, I do 8,500 miles a month, plus all these stop-offs, you know, plus all these, you know, the LTL, the pickups, the deliveries. He goes, I just can't do it anymore. Or, you know, can you please, you know, will you accept me back as a driver? And I said, with open arms, I would accept you back as a driver. You know, you are an amazing driver. You produce the miles. You know, I was so happy to hear from him. But sometimes, you know, people think that the grass is greener on your neighbor's lawn. And it turns out that it's not. Okay, so you need to be made aware of that. You should be talking to other drivers before. And you should always, always, always bring it up to your boss's attention if you are going to leave and the reason behind you're leaving your current company. Again, you you know, not always is your current company going to be able to match the rates that other people pay. I mean, somebody could be awarded a very, very big contract. And when they're awarded a big contract, they might have a little bit more of a budget to play with for drivers, you know, and, and therefore, you know, I wouldn't be able to compete with somebody who has, you know, hazmat loads or tanker loads that pay, you know, gazillions of dollars. And therefore they're paying the driver 75 or 70, 75 cents per mile. So the moral of this video is that in trucking, especially in trucking, you know, there are certain cycles. You know, sometimes you're at the top, sometimes you're at the bottom. But at the end of the day, you still have to be a genuinely good human being, okay? And when you're working with others, there's certain ways to bring it up to other people's attention on something that's happening or something that you would like differently, okay? I myself work with a lot of manufacturing companies. I myself work with a lot of people. And at the end of the day, the reason that they are attached to me is because I'm a genuinely, hopefully, I'm a genuinely good person and they enjoy working with me and I enjoy working with genuinely good people out there also and that's what kind of sticks us together and the guys that you're going to be with and hold hands when the times are tough right those are the guys that you're going to be having fun with the times are really really good so yes you know, times are tough right now in trucking, but those that are gonna be holding hands together and surviving this are gonna be the ones that are having fun, you know, in about three, four, five, six months when this whole thing turns around. So hopefully you learned something from this video. I'm Ronan, R-O-N-E-N, and I'll catch you in my next video. I just wanna talk about the holidays that are coming up. A lot of people are asking, what in the world do you get a truck driver? Well, you know what? I actually conducted a poll about this. So in a recent poll that I've conducted with over 1,500 truck drivers, here's what they want for the holidays. So 47% of them wanted a down pillow for the truck. So truck drivers are on the road for long periods of times and what they need is a comfortable pillow. An overwhelming majority, 47% of them wanted a down pillow for their truck. So if you're thinking, where in the world do I get a down pillow? For the truck drivers, well, here's a link below to some guy that's going around giving out these pillows. I think it's an awesome idea, and it's a great gift for truck drivers. Truck drivers sleep in their trucks for majority of the nights, and they do need a comfortable pillow. So order one from here and make your truck driver happy for the holidays. 19% of them wanted working gloves, 16% of them wanted a flashlight, 12% wanted a coffee mug, and 6% wanted slippers. Well, you can click the link below and get these truck drivers either one of these gifts. So if you're thinking of what to get your dad, your brother, or any other truck driver that you know, or your employees that are truck drivers, this is a perfect list to go by.